Well, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have just ignited America's final death blow. In fact, the duo is back with a vengeance to make sure that you, the American people, do not have freedom of speech online. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, Biden announced a brand new board, the Disinformation Governing Board, that was led by a radical leftist, Nina Jankowitz, who, as it turns out, this radical leftist herself spread misinformation everywhere about Hunter Biden and how, you know, the laptop was just Russia disinformation and how President Trump colluded with Russia, all of which turned out to be misinformation. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. But this brand new board, we were told, would just focus on foreign things. And then it comes out through, well, leaked whistleblowers that no, 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 this disinformation board was exactly what Lisa Haven and Justin this night I've been telling you all along, and that is that it is to censor any misinformation or disinformation that Joe Biden and his team don't like, you know, like saying things against COVID or the election or fill in the blank. Well, now there's a brand new task force because the last one got so much heat that they had to hit the pause button. But Joe Biden has brought it back, put Kamala Harris in charge of this brand new task force. And this task Task Force is all about, well, fighting harassment, abuse, and disinformation online. But before I get into the report, just a quick reminder, check out my partner at preparewithlisa.com. Right now, gas is going up, food is going up, inflation is off the hook, and there is even talk of recession. And even many of our leaders in the agricultural industry, including farmers, and even the United Nations are warning that a food crisis is coming. So now is absolutely the time to prepare you and your family. And you can do that at preparewithlisa.com. Lisa.com. And right now they have $150 off of that three month food supply kit. So check it out at preparewithlisa.com. All right, with that, let's dive into the corrupt Democratic Party, specifically the latest move by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the creation of a brand new task force to combat online harassment and abuse not to mention disinformation, right? They always got to do it with a little sugar, if you will, on the side. But let's go directly to the source here, whitehouse.gov. And I want to open first with their fact sheet. And here's the fact sheet. And you can see it was posted on the 16th, 2022. So very recently. But here it is, fact sheet. Presidential memorandum establishing the White House task force to address harassment and abuse. This is uh, the Disinformation and Governing Board 2.0. <laughs> it's a rebirth of what was paused. But here's what it says. It goes on to state this. Today, President Biden will sign a presidential memorandum establishing a White House task force to address online harassment and abuse. Responding to the need for government leadership to address online harms, which disappropriately affect women and girls and people of color and the LGBTQI plus individuals. Vice President Kamala Harris will launch the task force by hosting a survivor and expert round table this afternoon. The tragic events in Buffalo and Uvalde have underscored a fact known to all too well by many Americans. The internet can fuel hate, it can fuel misogyny, and it can fuel abuse with spillover effects that threaten our communities and online safety. Now, just want to hit the pause button. I'm, I'm going to go back to that in the minute because here's what I want to want to say. It's none of the government's business. They, they, since when is it the government's job to get involved in harassment and uh, any of that? Well, no. There's already somebody that does that. It's called the local police departments. Yeah, if someone's being abused or harassed online, they can report that and take that up with the local police department. There is nothing. It's none of the business of the federal government. But don't worry, in the name of safety and security, we're going to protect your safety online. Listen up, folks. We're protecting you. And we're going to protect you by controlling information online. This is... This is exactly what dictators do. And by the way, Kamala Harris uh, held that task force on Thursday, right? 
task force. And the task force uh, was held with some interesting people. Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland was there. The Surgeon General was, was there. And of course, you know, a VP, a very VIP, a very important person, uh, a tennis champion, Sloan Stevens, right? Let's bring in some celebrities into the mix, you know, kind of like they did with Matthew McConaughey to bring in some gun reform. They put a pretty little face out front. Yeah, yeah, they seem very keen on doing that. But let's dive in a little more to what this task force is all about because when the disinformation governing board came out Saki when she was the press secretary came out and said oh no 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 it's nothing like uh you know some of the senators are talking about don't listen to Tom Cotton don't listen to to Jim Jordan don't listen to any of those guys it doesn't have anything to do with that but then lo and behold whistleblower came out and it had everything to do with exactly what we said but let's ha- let's Let's see what the White House is telling us this time about this 2.0 ministry of truth, right? But it goes on. The task force will produce, this is the main agenda of this task force. The task force will produce recommendations for the federal government, the state government, technology platforms, aka social media, schools, and other public and private entities to prevent and address technology-facilitated gender-based violence, including a focus on the nexus between online misogyny and radicalization to violence. Okay, so interesting is there is violence happening right now towards these pro-life centers. Why? But, but, Joe Biden, you're sidetracked, you know. What about all that violence? Well, the mainstream media is just ignoring that, but I digress. Instead, they're going to focus on going after you, the American people, to keep you safe from, you know, conservatives like Lisa Haven and fill in the blank. But it goes on to say, the task force will have some people involved, the co-chair, the Gender Policy Council, and the National Security Council. And this will include the Attorney General, Merrick Garland. Great guy. (sighs) Yeah. the Secretary of Health and Human Services and other heads of federal agencies. Now, what are some of the things that are involved in this that they kind of describe in detail? Well, here's some of the things that they admit to, right? On the surface level, enhancing and expanding data collection and research across the federal government to measure the cost, prevalence, exposure to, and impact of technology facilitated gender based violence, including by studying the mental health effects of the harassed and abused perpetrated through social media, particularly affecting adolescents. I'm going to hit pause right there because the key point here is enhancing and expanding data collection and research to the federal government. In other words, They get more information on you, and they're going to collect all your information, completely illegal and against the Constitution, by the way. But on top of gathering all your information and seeing what you say, because they have to gather the information if they're going to go through it to find information online, right? Like, here's what it says. Here's what else they say, admit to. Developing programs and policies to address the disproportionate impact of online harassment abuse and disinformation, uh uh-oh, there it is, disinformation campaigns targeting women, LGBTQI individuals who are public and political figures, government and civic leaders, activists and journalists in the U.S. and globally. So right there, there's there's some questions to be had. What what, What do you mean by disinformation campaigns targeting all the people you listed? What What do you mean by that, Kamala, Biden? No answer yet from, you know, the pulpit. In fact, in fact, they were asked this question, right? In a press, in a press, in a little press study. Here's here's what went on. The first one on the online policy task force that the vice president's leading that's getting kicked off today. Mm -hmm. Um, On a background call last night, we were told that it's going to be different from the disinformation governance board um, in that it's going to focus on illegal conduct online. But the memo creating it was a little bit broader and uh, mentioned, and I'm quoting from the document, uh, quote, online harassment, abuse, and disinformation campaigns targeting women and LGBTQI plus individuals who are public and political figures. Um, Could you clear up the disinformation charge? So I would need to uh, talk to her team. I was not on the background call. uh, So that specific um, uh, language that you're you're providing to me, I would just have to check in with her. I would also encourage you to check to check as well with her her team. Um, I can't say more because I, I wasn't on the background call. In other words, I have no idea. I don't know. She's 
is like one of the worst press secretaries. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, like, really? That's what you had to say? Even I, I thought Saki was pretty bad, but no, 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 no. She is much worse, right? I don't know what's going on. I just, you know, I just work here. <laughs> they didn't involve me in that. Maybe you should ask her. Why wouldn't she answer that? Because obviously it's a disinformation governance board 2.0 and it's a ministry of truth, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't try to gather our information online and figure out ways, programs, and policies to somehow address disproportionate harassment. Everybody gets harassed. It's a sad fact. But they also put out a little bit of a memorandum that kind of expands a little more into all of that. But here's that memorandum. This is also on the WhiteHouse.gov memorandum on the establishment of the White House Task Force to address this online harassment and abuse. This really reiterates everything in the other fact sheet. Uh, but it goes on to add... Um, just just a little bit more about uh you know the time frame that they have for this and here's kind of the time frame that they have to report back within 180 days of the date of this memorandum the co-chairs of the task force will submit to the president a blueprint outlining a whole of government approach to preventing and addressing technology facilitated gender-based violence including concrete actions that executive departments and agencies and offices have committed to take to implement the task force recommendations. Not only that, uh, but after that initial period, they also are told that they need to submit right information um, at the one year marker. And I believe this is also going to be on an annual basis. So you have to constantly follow up with the president to make sure that this information is brought in front of him and he has it and then he can decide what he's going to do hmm I, and i can't help but think you know the, the white house has already admitted already admitted that they are working with facebook to tell facebook what is and isn't acceptable jen Psaki admitted that i've got many videos on that on restrictedrepublic.com you gotta get over there and subscribe but yeah she absolutely did and by the way this is all coming on the heels uh, uh, of the biden administration being sued right and here it is uh this is on reclaimthenet.org state attorney general's petition judge for injunction against biden administration to stop social media censorship pressure now why would they need to do that because the biden administration like i said has openly admitted to doing it and so these attorney generals are upset and they're suing joe biden but he doesn't care because again i i put out a report the other day on restricted republic and um the democrats think they're above the law and in fact if you control the fbi the cia the doj the dhs and, and, and you're in charge of all these organizations they they won't do anything just like we're seeing right now how come no action? How, how come Biden feels no, no, no care for the Constitution, no care for the fact that he's being sued, and yet goes on anyway with this 2.0 disinfo governing board without no regard to the law? Hmm. Because they think they're above the law. That's why we have to start getting the right people in. Anyhow, thanks again for tuning in. I love all of you. I'm Lisa Haven signing out.